the ultimate goal of any of us really is to get a text to image model running in the browser. Ultimately, that's what we all want. That's what we've always wanted. And I am proud to say that I have achieved that feat. You can see the results right here in this GIF or GIF as they're sometimes called. Um, and today I'm just gonna go through the process of you know, getting it to work. Okay, so we all know that Google made this really crazy image in paper where they were generating all these really whack images that were really good. We all know about that. We also know that they're Google and they're keeping all of that stuff to themselves as like a little secret. Um, but luckily there's this guy called Lucidrains, uh, this guy here who went ahead and implemented Google's ImageN uh, model in PyTorch based on the paper that they wrote. So he read the paper and then he went ahead and made a PyTorch implementation for the paper, which is like his best guess at um, how it works. Okay, cool. But of course, the models that you create with Lucidrain's um, image and PyTorch package, they don't have any weights. They'll just spit out like random noise. You can pass in whatever you want. They'll spit out noise because they haven't been trained. So um, what I did is I went ahead and I trained one on CIFAR 10, which is, um, uh, very classical machine learning data set. Um, there are 10 classes, so it can only generate 10 different types of thing. Birds, boats, airplanes, etc. So I went ahead and trained an Imogen model using Lucidrain's uh, PyTorch implementation. I then went ahead and converted that into ONNX format, also known as Onyx, um, which was annoying. But we got it done in the end. I actually ended up needing some help from ChatGPT. Okay, so me and OpenAI managed to get this ImageN model into Onyx format. And then finally from there, I bundled the Onyx model, oops, I bundled the Onyx model into a Chrome extension, uh, which you can then see running over here. Um, I'm being a little tricky here, I'm being a little um, sneaky because this is sped up like a thousand times. It's actually running way slower than it looks like but I didn't want to make the GIF last like 10 minutes. Okay, so that's uh, what I've done. That's the, the nature of this project. And what we're gonna to do today is I've got a new computer here. I haven't installed this project on this computer yet. And we're just gonna walk through the process of taking the train model and sticking it in Chrome. And maybe that'll be helpful to whatever project that you're doing right now. Because at the end of the day, that is kind of where machine learning models belong. They belong in the browser, where anyone can use them, you know, in their day-to-day -day life um, without having to install thousands of things or open up a new application. You know, we want the machine learning model to be right there, just where the user is already doing things in the browser and ready to help them, you know, with, you know at, a, at a moment's notice. That's really what you want. Okay, so I have this GitHub page, which you can go and visit, and you'll probably have to go and visit it if you want to code along. Um, because that's what I'm going to be using. So first step is we're going to download this GitHub. I'm just going to use GitHub Desktop because I use a Windows and that's the easiest way to use Git on Windows. Um, just go ahead, yeah, clone the URL. Uh, yeah, that looks fine to me. And this shouldn't take a very long time. And now uh, we're going to start walking through this sort of, um, this checklist that I wrote here for myself. So the first thing on this checklist is to train the Imogen model. Now, I've already done an, uh, a video on how I trained it. So if you're interested in the training process, go check it out. Uh, ultimately, you end up with a very a small model. Again, it only outputs 32 times 32 images. And it only has like 10 classes that it can output because those are the 10 classes from CIFAR 10. Um, go ahead and look into that if you want. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're just going to visit the Hugging Face page I set up and we can see the final train model right here and we can just download it. It's called this strange, odd, very strange name because that was the name of the, the training run that Weights and Biases automatically gave, uh, gave us. Okay, so that's downloading. Uh, it looks like the GitHub has finished, so that's good. And we can just open it in Visual Studio Code and kind of have a poke around. So it looks like we've got these three... Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, which is not many, so that's good. It looks like actually there's not much code here. And then there's this demo thing, just has some images. Toy model, okay, and this has a bit more stuff. Toy model is the Chrome extension code. So because the Chrome extension is sort of way down on our list, it's like, you know, step five or four or something, 
Um, we, don't, we don't have to worry about any of that at the moment. All we have to worry about right now are those three, okay, those three uh, notebooks. And we're going to start worrying about them in a second. Uh, because first, I'll just want to give you an idea of what this model actually does. So I'm going to head over to Weights and Biases. And we're just going to look at the outputs of the model. Okay, so this is Giddy Capybara. That's the run that we're now downloading right now. It's about a gigabyte uh, large. And, you know, here's the training loss that I experienced. It, it took about 57,000 steps, something like that. And these are the samples that it was outputting. So if we just full screen this, you can see that towards the end, we were actually getting some pretty reasonable samples, right? This was, we asked for an airplane, it gave us this. We asked for an automobile, it gave us this. Cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, etc. So um, this is what it was outputting. And these are the only classes, again, I have to emphasize, because it was trained on CIFAR 10, and CIFAR 10 is like 60,000 images, which all the images are one of these six classes. And we only trained Imogen on those images. All it knows is how to generate those, sorry, the 10 classes. So just be aware of that, you know, don't expect it, don't expect to prompt like, you know, vast, stunning wilderness painting by Greg Rutowski. It won't, it won't, it won't give you that, but it will maybe give you a really blurry horse if you're really, really nice to it. Um, so these are the kind of outputs you want. And using this page, you can go ahead and you know, scroll through the training. You know, you can see it gets sort of worse and worse as you go back in time. Um, all of the links that I'm going to be playing with are on this GitHub page. So you can actually find the weights and biases report, which should be publicly accessible. You should be able to access that. And yeah, you'll see the same stuff here. Giddy Kaibara was the final run. There are a few more other runs you can have a look at. So that's, that's the kind of model we're dealing with. Um, and we might even load the model into Python before we proceed, just to make sure that everything's working fine. But at the moment, we're still waiting for it to download. So I'm gonna go listen to some tunes and you can go well, actually, you won't have to do anything because I'll just skip forward in time. Okay, so those were some pretty good tunes and we're almost done downloading. So everything's working out basically. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by opening a, um, uh, one of the notebooks and loading in this model once it's downloaded. So we'll just open up command prompt and go to the location. And I think it was called, what the heck was this thing called? Browser-based Imogen. Yeah, nice, okay. And of course we have all the things. Now let's see which one of these notebooks is the one that is the one we wanna use. You can run these notebooks inside VS Code, but I always have a really bad time when I do that. So I'm just not, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna not do that instead. Okay, so it looks like this is the one we want, export unit. Um, and what it does is it basically, it imports the unit um, from this checkpoint and then it then exports it again into the Onyx format. What's a unit? Um, it's a special kind of machine learning model that takes in pixels and, and um, spits out pixels. And usually there are a bunch of them inside a standard Imogen model. In this case, I'm just using one because it's a very, very small model. I only need one unit. Usually there are like three. Um, so that's what a unit is. Uh, it's just the, the most important part of the image in, basically. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and open the Jupyter Notebook. Just uh, some spelling mistakes, but that's fine. And export unit. Cool. So these are just some dependencies, and of course we seed because we like seeding. In this case, seeding probably isn't so important, but that's neither here nor there. And... While this is setting up, we're going to go and find that checkpoint that just downloaded. Okay, cool. And we're going to cut it and we're going to plonk it straight into this directory. Just straight into the root of browser-based Imogen. You know, that's fine. Okay, so we don't have Imogen PyTorch installed. That's probably something that you'll encounter. So we're going to go ahead and install it. I'm going to go CMD. And I happen to know that the version of Python that I'm using here, Python 3.10, is the same one that my Jupyter Notebook is using. Um, and so I'm just going to install it using this command line. But what you could also do is you could also install it here. In fact, let's just install it here. Um, pip install. 
Uh, and this, this installing it here in the Jupyter Notebook will make sure that whatever, because you might have like several versions of Python and maybe the version of Python in your command line is not the version of Python in your notebook. But if you install it here, it'll make sure that the version in your notebook has Imogen PyTorch installed. Okay, I think this is all fine. I, it says successfully. So just based on that fact, I think, I think we're probably fine. Uh, import. Uh, just a side note, you might... Okay, nice. Worked for us. That's really good. We got past the first cell. Um, just a side note, if you're a Mac person, maybe this won't work for you. So watch out for that. Um, but okay, first cell, we've done it. And now we're going to create our unit. Now, this architecture, it happens to be the same architecture that I trained with. So if you mess around with these parameters and you try to install the same checkpoint as we had, uh, we just downloaded, you're going to have a bad time and it's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. But basically all we're doing here is setting up an Imagen instance and then loading in the checkpoint. And great, we just loaded in. Now, I guess this is probably a good opportunity for us to just test out what the Imagen model does, right? Like that, that seems like a good time to do that. Um, and here we go. I've already got some code that does that. So I'm just going to, just going to play around with that. Um, so we're just saying, Hey, give us a photo of a truck and we're converting the output to a pill image and we're saving it as a PNG. There's probably no need to save it here. Oh, let's save it. Why not? Uh, this shouldn't take too long because we're running in the Python runtime, which is fairly fast. And at the moment, what it's doing is it's downloading. I'm imagining what it's downloading is the T5 transformer. So let me talk about T5 for a second. So the way Imogen works, Imogen isn't just one model. It's sort of a bunch of models. And it kind of makes sense that it's sort of a bunch of models. So what you need to do is go from a photo of a truck, like the sentence, to an actual image that displays a truck. And the way that Imogen does that is first it passes that sentence into a tokenizer and then an encoder. In this case, the T5 tokenizer and encoder. That's that's this thing. If you want to read up on T5, I will, I will keep a link on T5 for you. Uh, but basically it's a very good language model. And so T5 will take that sentence, turn it into a text embedding. And then using that text embedding, you use that to condition the model which is basically to tell the model what kind of a thing to make. So you, you condition the model on that embedding and then you pass in noise and then you pass in noise again and you keep on passing in noise and each time the noise gets closer and closer to something like a truck and eventually you end up with your, your truck. And that's sort of how it works. So what we did here is we just downloaded the Giddy Capybara checkpoint, which is just this bit here, the image and diffusion model bit. And I'm assuming, I'm pretty certain, that what's being downloaded now is the T5 model. Um, so don't worry about that, it'll take a bit of time, but it's, yeah, just chill. I guess it's time for more tunes. And now it's sampling, everything's downloaded. Um, clearly there's something a bit wrong with the, <laughs> the TQDM here, but uh, we finally got to the end apparently. And here we go, look, look at that. Look at that little boy. <laughs> I'll go find the actual image cause, uh, oh, no, never mind about that. Um, here, truck four, here we go. So this, this is, this is the, this is the image and look, it does kind of look like a truck or like a forklift or something. That's what we got for truck. And of course we could do another one. Is, is cat one of them? Horse. There we go. Let's go. We'll try that. And again, as you can see, like sampling is not, not slow on Python. Python runs sampling pretty fast. We're running on the GPU. So of course it's like, it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty fast. And look, it looks kind of like a horse a little bit. Look at that. If that isn't a horse, I don't know what is. I, I don't want to live in a world where this isn't a horse, you know? Okay. So that's the model just running locally. Great. Uh, in PyTorch. Now what we have to do is we have to convert that model. Let's have a look at where we are. We're like here. We want to go to here. We want to convert the model to Onyx. And there's a bit of a tricky thing we have to do first, because if you go into the code for Imogen PyTorch, so here we are in the Imogen PyTorch code, and there's this function in here, expm1. 
this one. And it appears like three times in the entire, twice in the entire code base. Um, but it's definitely there. And it turns out this function is part of the graph that makes up the unit that we've just downloaded. So this function, it's part of the model. So, uh, let me actually just close that one. Yeah, so now I'm gonna not run this cell. I'm gonna skip this cell and pretend that I don't, I don't know about it. We're just gonna try doing the next bit and then we'll come back to it when we hit an error. So next what we do have to do is we have to create a special class that has a forward method that performs like a single sampling um, step. Because if you drill into the, the method we just used, this trainer.sample, if you actually drill into it, it's calling the same method like 250 times deep in the code. There's like this long for loop. And the way that you convert models into onyx with this torch.onyx export function, what actually happens is that you pass it in some inputs and then using autograd, the PyTorch code like constructs um, a graph of the model. But if you construct a graph of the model that contains this for loop where you do uh, 250 iterations or whatever, then it's gonna construct a graph that has like 250 times the graph that you need. <laughs> It'll think that there's, you know, the, the one graph that you need times 250 times. Uh, and that it'll basically, it won't work. You know, the first time I tried to export in that manner, it took um, half an hour and, and, and still it hadn't even like exported. So that's a no. Um, so instead we have to make sure that we're just isolating the, the code that does a single sampling step. We're bundling it into this forward method of this new um, class. And that's all the class really does. It just wraps Imogen and then gives it a forward method such that um, it actually just performs a single sampling step. So here we go. U equals Imogen Onyx, and you pass in the image, the unit and the Imogen. These are the things we defined up here. The trainer we were only using to get an easy sample. And okay, great. So we've now got this U, and this U is a, a module of the kind that can be exported into Onyx because it has this nice forward function which passes in all the arguments that we need. So now let's export and we will have an error. So get ready for that. Get your error hat on. Now there are all these warnings that are going to be thrown up. I actually looked through every single one of these warnings and it turns out they're not actually anything to worry about. Almost all of them are regarding control flow statements. Uh, so without, you know, boring you too much, often what happens when you have a control flow statement in your model somewhere, like, like the model code, the unit somewhere contains like an if then statement, is that you can, you can basically only end up exporting half the model. Um, but I looked through all of these and it turns out that all the if statements, they're fine. They're not actually anything to worry about and you do get the full model when you try to export like this. And I guess a bit more about what's going on here. So here what we're doing is we're, we're passing some dummy input into Onyx. Um, we're passing a dummy, dummy image of shape 1, 3, 32, 32. We're passing in a dummy um, a text embedding. We're passing in a dummy text mask. We're passing in a dummy um, time step bounding, which sort of tells the model, okay, is this an image that's mostly noise or is this an image further towards the end of the process? and the image is actually now mostly um, finished. And basically, you know, it'll make different kinds of changes based on whether the image is really new or almost finished, which, you know, that kind of makes sense. Um, and the last thing is the conditioning scale, which kind of um, tells the model how much focus to pay to the, the, um, the embedding, the text embedding which in this case is like a photo of a truck or something, right? A photo of a truck. That's what the embedding is. So we've got all these inputs and we've just passed them to um, this export function. Again, uh, it does the standard sort of tracing thing where it just feeds all the inputs into the model, waits for the back propagation mechanism to occur. It may not actually be the back propagation mechanism. Some sort of tracing mechanism happens automatically when you run things through PyTorch models. And it takes advantage of that to build a graph of the model 
So like a sort of mathematical representation of the model as opposed to the code representation that you started off with. And then it converts that graph, which is technically in something called TorchScript now, into Onyx. And it'll save it into this, um, this, fo this file here. Toy model public unit 32 Onyx. Okay, and we got an error. That took about five minutes, by the way. So if it takes five minutes, don't worry. We got an error, and this is the unsupported operator error. That's the error we wanted and expected. And if you scroll down, way down, you get this. EXPM1 to Onyx Opset version 13 is not supported. Basically, this is saying Onyx doesn't have an EXPM1 equivalent. So your graph that we've constructed contains this thing called EXPM1. We, we saw it before, and Onyx can't deal with that. Sorry. And you can kind of see that, actually. I'm actually going to go and have a look at Onyx Opset version 13. Okay, so there are these three versions of EXPM1. Uh, NV Prims, Prims, and A10. And all of them are listed as not supported on PyTorch. So it says, hey, if you want to convert your model from PyTorch into Onyx, don't have that function inside. That's the only way about it. And this took, this was really annoying for me because I'm not like a maths person. I don't really understand how to, you know, what the XPM1 function even is or does. So first I did a little bit of reading and I worked out what EXPM1 does. It's like a numerically stable version of, um, uh, of this, this thing here. So turns out that at really low values of X, uh, this function, exponential of X minus one, becomes really unstable. Actually, if you, if you look in the image in PyTorch code, there's this link that references this PDF document. And the PDF document has this really nice graph, or at least I think it's, it's really nice. Here we go. So this is a graph, and I'm gonna zoom in a bit here so we can really see it. This is a graph of just normal exp of x minus one versus the expm1 function. Um, and as you can see, as the value of x gets really, really small, uh, the output, which is being graphed on the y-axis, goes crazy for the normal one. And for expm1, it's like fine. And it just so happens that in the, in the model that we're dealing with, we end up with these really tiny values of x. So if you just use this normal exp of x minus 1, everything goes crazy. I tried it because I was like, well, I'll just try it. Maybe the values of x are not small. Um, it doesn't work. You get nans everywhere. Like rather than not putting an image, the network will put out a whole bunch of nans. Um, so... I spent about an hour trying to search for a numerically stable version of this so that I could implement it in PyTorch. No luck. Um, and then I just asked ChatGPT and ChatGPT was kind enough to just write this function for me right here. Uh, and it turns out that this faux expm-1 is equivalent to expm-1 uh, for small values of x. And I'm really glad that ChatGPT there was there because otherwise I would not have gotten this and this would have just, it would have ended, would never have completed it. So, okay, we, we have like a challenge here. We have to now find all the instances of EXPM1 in Image and PyTorch and replace them. Uh, and it would be nice if we could just replace them in the source code, but then, then when other people try to replicate what I've done, they wouldn't be able to because they would just be using the original source code which contains the XPM minus one. So instead what I've done is I've just overwritten the functions uh, the functions on the Imogen model that contain EXPM1. There are these two functions. There's like uh, uh, this one here, log SNR and Q posterior. These are the only two functions that contain EXPM1 and we've just replaced them with exactly equivalent functions, except with this faux expm1 function instead. Um, okay, so you run this cell. Great, the functions have now been replaced, but the model is still numerically identical. Uh, it creates exactly the same graph, and now we just export again. And we'll get the same warnings, we'll get that big t pink thing. When I open my eyes, there'll be a big pink thing. Uh, okay, well it'll come. And then we just have to wait for the export to complete. And then we'll have our lovely um, Onyx model. Okay, so that's doing its thing. In the meantime, we're gonna export the T5 model. So just recall 
This is what Imogen looks like. It's a bunch of different models. And when we eventually run it inside of Chrome here, we need to have all the models inside Chrome. We can't just have one of them in Python because Chrome can't talk to Python. So uh, we're going to have to, as well as turning this diffusion model into Onyx, we're also going to have to turn this encoder into Onyx. And we're going to have to get this tokenizer as well. So let's do that while we're waiting. Um, I'm going to click on this export T5 function here. And this is much easier. This is much easier code. We import transformers. Um, this is just a this is just a, a library that Google has set up to make it easier to access the T5 model, which is really good, by the way. T5 is excellent. Um, now we're going to import the T5 model. Now, because we already downloaded it earlier, remember earlier we did like that inference and it took like ages to download um, up here somewhere. Anyway, because we already downloaded it, we, we've gotten it really quickly. We've got the T5 model. And now all we have to do is export it to toy model public t 5onyx So that's much easier. The T5 model is something that has been used for a long time. So it doesn't contain any like wacky, crazy functions and Onyx can export it um, easy peasy. In fact, it, it's already finished. So if we go back into our uh, toy model folder and we go to public, we'll see, yeah, t5model.onyx is already there. So that's, that's one of the things we need. Um, and there's this other file called tokenizer.json, which is this long JSON file. The encoder is a machine learning model, and so is this Imogen model. It's all about, you know, it's like a transformer. I think both of them are transformers. They involve transformers. Basically, it's a lot of complicated weights, and it runs on CUDA and all that. The tokenizer is actually much simpler. All it does is it takes a sentence in English and replaces all the letters with numbers, like special numbers in like a big book of numbers where each, uh, which each word corresponds to a number. So the tokenizer is much easier. It's not actually a machine learning model. There's no need to put it into Onyx. Um, just using this JSON file, this, this big JSON file, you can load it into any language, assuming that there's a tokenizer, a T5 tokenizer implementation in that language, which there is, uh, luckily. Uh, this really nice guy went ahead and made one like three months ago. So no need to turn the tokenizer into Onyx, but now we have the T5 model in Onyx and soon, if we're lucky, we'll also have the UNet sitting in Onyx as well. Okay, cool. So it looks like this is completed without any errors. So let's confirm that. Uh, there we go. So we've got the UNet32 Onyx and the model T5 Onyx. Uh, be careful. I've just fell, fallen for that trap. Be careful with clicking on these files uh, because uh, VS Code will just show them to you. And they're like these huge files, so it'll lag VS Code out. Uh, so just don't <laughs> try not to click on them mm. if you can avoid it. So let's go back to our sort of spreadsheet of mystery and wonder over here. We've downloaded the tokenizer transformer. We've exported the um, UNet model to Onyx. Now we have to load everything into the Chrome extension. Okay, so now, now we're in Chrome extension territory. We're in this final phase over here. Now, Chrome extensions are complicated beasts. Um... I'm probably not going to go too in-depth into Chrome extensions right now because my brain is full, so maybe in another video. But essentially you have this manifest and this tells Chrome all the files that, that are involved in the extension. And in this case, I've basically told it that there's, there's one file and the file is called model.html. And model.html imports a bunch of JavaScript uh one of them is ort.js, O-R-T. This is Onyx runtime. And that's a package that's used to import Onyx models, which is the, the main thing that we're going to do. And another one is tokenizers.js, which was made by, I'm going to link the guy. He's really good. Uh, this helps us import the tokenizer from the JSON file. Then there's a utils file. And then there's model.js, which is the, the file that contains the logic, the business logic for our extension. Now, if you want to skip all of this and you want to just test out the extension for some reason, um, you can go to this uh, hugging face thing that I made and just download browser-based imagen.zip and, and sort of skip everything. And this has everything inside. It has all the models. It has all the nonsense. Um, you'll notice it's really small. Uh, and that's because Onyx models are actually pretty small. If you go to yeah, browser-based imagen, 
Kitty Kaibara is like one gigabyte. But if you go in here, you can actually see that uh, UNET is, yeah, it's only like, it's only like 200 megabytes. Yeah, it's like 250 megabytes. So this is like a really tiny image and model. Anyhow, so if you want, you can just download this and then use that instead of what we're about to do. But what's the fun? You know, what's the fun in not doing things in a painful manner? Uh, we'll just read through this code a little bit. So everything kind of centers around this sample function, which takes in a unit and some text embeddings. So you remember text embeddings are like, uh, this is that's this bit. Um, takes in a unit plus the text embeddings, and then it performs, you know, 200 iterations, 250 iterations, or as many as you like. In this case, we're doing 250. And what it does is it feeds these inputs into the model. And if you look at these inputs, an image, embeddings, mask, time step, and this conditioning scale, you'll see that they kind of match up to the ones that we had here. And in fact, they match up to these names exactly. So we are feeding into the Onyx model the inputs that the, the model requires. We are getting out this image, right? So we're saying unit run prediction, getting the prediction, uh, and then we're feeding it in again, right? So we, we assign image to the prediction, and then we, we, we feed it in again during this for loop. And every time we display the output, uh, you know, what, what, what change happened, uh, and then we, we continue again. And we do this 250 times, and then finally we've, we're finished, and we're done, and, the, and the, the prediction is completed. So this is the main thing we're doing in JavaScript. It's pretty similar to what we were doing in Python, actually, but in Python, someone else wrote it for us. Now we have to write it ourselves, like, like idiots. Um, yes, yeah, so that's like sort of the main big function. Those are the main two big functions there. And again, we only, we only do the text embedding once, and then we can pass it in the same text embedding to all 250 steps. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of the code that we're working with. What we have to do is we have to turn this into an extension because this is, this is JavaScript code at the moment. It's not a Chrome extension yet. And the way we do that is using NPM. So we're gonna open a command prompt. We're gonna go to the right place. Uh, we're gonna go into the toy model directory. And we're going to run NPM run build. And what that should do is it should generate a build directory over here. If you don't have NPM or Node Package Manager installed, you will have to do that first. But I have, so lucky me. Okay, so now I've got this thing, Webpack is not recognized. So part of the thing that you need is Webpack. Uh, that's what you need to install Chrome extensions. Apparently it's quite easy to install, just npm install webpack, that seems, seems fine. Okay, webpack looks like it's installed. Uh, so let's just try again. Okay. That seems fine. Webpack CLI seems pretty benign to me. It seems like something I probably want anyway, if anything. Okay, so we just got some kind of error um, here, something about can't install something something but we ran build and there were no errors so apparently this error doesn't matter uh npm is really strange so i i just you know if it works it works we don't touch anything so there's now this build directory which looks promising and it's got uh it looks like what it's supposed to look like to me uh so now we're going to load this build directory as a chrome extension so I'm gonna open up Chrome, go to the extensions tab, Chrome dash dash extensions. And you might have to turn developer mode on. This is a thing. So make sure developer mode is on. And then we're going to load unpacked. I think it has to be a zip file for it to be packed. I'm not sure. Toy model and just this build directory. And then you select the folder and there we go. Browser-based imaging. And we're done. We're done here. Let's just make sure we haven't missed anything in our in our list of magic and wonder and mystery. Um, okay, so it looks like we are at the last step. But we'll see if it actually works. So we have loaded it as, a, an, ex, as an extension. We'll now select the extension we want. We'll just select this. We'll pin it. And we're going to left-click on that baby. And we're going to inspect. And hopefully when we inspect... We're not going to see a whole bunch of errors. 
Okay, tokenizer loaded, great. Tokenizer is easy to load, it's just a JSON file. Now the real test is loading transformer, excellent. Unit loaded. Okay, and now it says standing by, which means that we can now go ahead and make it generate something. I would like a frog. No, <laughs> a frog, yes, let's do frog. Submit. And there we go, iteration two, iteration three. And it should be logging something in that terminal. Yeah, starting inference. Okay, and then now it's, it's, it's slowly, slowly, very slowly, as you can see, generating the image and it changes the, the random image slowly. Now, because we've done the inspect mode, it's gonna be running even slower. So we're gonna close this and we're gonna just click anywhere on the screen or visit another tab or anything. Basically do anything and this will close. So it's now closed, it's gone forever, we'll have to start again. But we'll just click on it normally without inspecting this time. Wait for it to load. I'm gonna ask for an airplane and I'm gonna hit submit. And this time it'll be much faster, but still really slow. And until about iteration 200, it'll look like nothing. So don't worry if it looks like nothing until that time, that's normal. And as you can see, it's, um, it's really slow. <laughs> it's incredibly slow. This is like utterly useless for any practical purpose whatsoever. So all of you guys who skipped ahead, you know, thinking you could get something cool out of it, <laughs> the joke's on you. And that's the end of the tutorial. If you liked, if you liked it, um, go leave a like on that PyTorch Imogen uh, project because that, that did like 90% of the work here. If you have any questions, go ahead, hit the YouTube comments. Uh, or the Discord, we have a Discord full of some like weirdly switched on people. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next week, maybe. <laughs>